How's it going YouTube? It's time for a late in the day Tuesday to play and here in the 365 series we are at albums 211 and 212 and I have well Broken Bells and if you don't know Broken Bells, Broken Bells is James Mercer of the Shins fame, he looks like Kevin Spacey, and Danger Mouse, Brian Burton, legendary already, in my opinion, producer and collaborator, uh, featured on a number of things, the new Chili Peppers, the last Portugal the Man, of course, one half of Gnarls Barkley, and many, many other projects. So, this is sort of their contribution to what I would call fantastical folk electronica and it's not in any way I guess what I would call over the top or overzealous it's just really in my opinion uh, their admiration or admiration however you want to pronounce that for one another and how they could blend that so it's in a sense an audible friendship in its own way. Uh, and I really like that because there are things about the Shins that I like and I dislike and there are things that Danger Mouse has done that I like and dislike. And in a way, there are things about both of these albums that I like and dislike. And overall, I like these almost better than any of the other counterparts from, I guess, Danger Mouse authentically. Uh, and that's not to discredit any of their other work. I just really appreciate the collaboration. Now, some of the pitfalls of that are it didn't really translate live well. Having seen them uh, twice, uh, both times at festivals, it was kind of calm, uh, very subdued. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but I think that that is sort of where the music comes from. And in that way, where the first album the self-titled album really sort of stole me away. Uh, it was good background music. Like, I could work and listen to this. I could do schoolwork and listen to this. And it didn't, uh, it didn't convolute my situation. Uh, of course, uh, you know, there's always that. You know, there's always a complaint, I suppose. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I just don't know if it was really ever meant to be a live production. After the disco, I don't know if that will be their last album. It kind of felt like it to me, but it's not as good as the uh, debut. But it still sort of, in my opinion, works. It almost sounds as if they had some songs that didn't quite make it on here, and then they just sort of took that, you know, a little further, put it together, and put it out. Uh, and you know, it, it's it's witty, it's smart, uh, and and again, it, it's not pretentious. You know, they both are very talented very liked, likable musicians with a fan base that could easily have uh, made some experimentally artistic something or, you know, tried way too hard or whatever have you. And I'm not saying that they didn't try enough. I think it just shows a really good sense of self-editing, uh, a sense of uh, patience and, and maturity. So, yeah, uh, while some of the moments fall idle, I think it makes for a very relaxing, enjoyable listening experience. So, what are the differences? Well, I think that the Broken Bells self-title offered a little bit more in a sense of replayability because of its catchy hooks, and I think they were sort of working on building a brand with this album. Uh, the High Road is a really fun song that really reminds me a lot of The Shins, which being the introductory track, I think was intentional. I think they wanted people who are listening for James Mercer to be like, oh, okay, it's not that different. But then by the end of the album, with The Mall and Misery, uh, my favorite track by far, um, it, they really sort of open the door to what is to come for the future of Broken Bells, and they really embody uh, original sound in that one. That song, to me, is the uh, pieta of this project, and it is, uh, without a doubt, extremely enjoyable. Uh, overall, I think that some of the horn usage, uh, the Ghost Inside, that's a great track, um, you know, some of the... Uh, ability to, to be a little bit more avant-garde with the folk sounds because of Brian's sort of, I guess, texturization additions through uh, synth usage and all of those things, really takes what James is known for uh, and, and, plat and, and, and 
at the plateau it's been at and elevates it. So after the disco, of course, uh, you know, the follow-up record took a minute to come out. It, it did have a few decent singles on it, of course, after the disco being the, uh, the main one. It just didn't really resonate as strongly with me, but I still enjoy it. It's good for a, for a, a listen, like I said, in like a background sense. It just didn't have the staying power that the first one did. But, again, it seems like they're almost a continuation of each other and uh, like maybe some of the leftovers. And I would, I would hazard that in After the Disco, the title, uh, some level, because again, witty, smart lyrics, some level of that might be and a testament to, uh, you know, the narrative that is the outside picture of the band as a whole and where they were headed or if this was the end or, or something. Now, that's probably got many, many layers to it, structurally speaking, but just not as rich. So, overall, it does so uh, add some of the uh, layers that you might want out of James's sort of vocal that is almost like a talked vocal. It's, it's not always sing songs. It's sort of... Uh, spoken word almost, but, you know, it, it's it's quaint. So, for what it's worth, I, I highly suggest at least listening to the self-titled. If you enjoy it, you will enjoy the second one, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, give it a spin, give it some time, and, uh, you know, see if it grows on you. Anyhow, I really, really just wanted to add this into the uh, 365 series as a testament to both of these uh, great musicians, especially Brian. Uh, already done several albums that he's been featured on, and I, I think that because of my love affair with the initial record, it was only fitting to do this. So, what did you think of both of these Broken Bells albums? Do you think, do you know, is there something I have missed out on about a follow-up? Uh, is it the end? I don't know. Uh, comments below. Let's continue the conversation. I always like that. If you share, please use the hashtag that's keeping this thing alive, hashtag 365 album reviews in 2016. Of course, I can be found on Instagram at daily underscore vinyl. If you hop on Facebook, I'm at backslash daily vinyl online. And to stay up to date on all of my, uh, you know, videos and things of that nature, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like if you can, you know, it's just one click. And of course, I have a lot of sub playlists going on, so if you like what I'm doing, please browse around on my channel. Find uh, some of the other things, some real-time music video reviews, some tipsy top tens, uh, all sorts of things. So there's a lot to be found on my channel by subscribing. So, until next time, take care of yourself. We will see you tomorrow on Wednesday with album number 213. And if you are staying tuned, it should roll into that one for you right now, and it is Car Seat Headrest, Teens of Denial. I've been waiting patiently to do this one, and I am excited for it. So Car Seat Headrest coming up next, all right?